give you advice in terms of how to control your emotions where, because if he had to lose it film after film, I mean, he, I mean we've lost count of the number of films he's done. He was probably doing four films at a time, yeah. right? Uh, did he give you any advice in terms of holding back, in terms of having a certain control over what could be each character becoming you each time? Well, firstly, I, I, I won't agree with your perhaps. Mm. For me, he is the greatest. Um, but I think he, we've never sat down and had these discussions. Really? It, for me, it's been more about learning from how he conducted himself. When dad came home at night, he was dad. He never brought his work home. The first time I saw my father, saw my father come home in costume was um, he was shooting a movie called Insaniyat and he was shooting right next to the house and he came home for lunch and he came dressed as a police inspector. <laughs> and I was like, wow, you know, cool. And I mean, I, I'm used How to... How old were you? I was um, early teens, I think. Okay. But that was you would know yeah, that he's yeah, 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 yeah. So I was like, okay, yeah. cool. And um, that was the first time he brought his work home. Otherwise, it was very clear he never brought work home. We, nev we never grew up like the typical, you know, film industry kids. We, uh, you know, none of these film magazines were allowed in the house. Mm. Um, you know, there was this press ban that was going on at that point of time mm. with my father. So there were no, none of these film fairs and all mm. those kind of magazines, not even trade papers. Mm. So we, in a sense, for many years of our lives, didn't even know that this concept of the film industry, it was just normal life. You know, I mean, uh, people find it a, b a bit difficult to understand. I, I enjoy telling this because mm -hmm. it, it, it just gives you a perspective. You know, people say, what is it like growing up with Amitabh and Jaya Bachchan? Right. And I'm like, yeah, it was fine. It was normal. I mean, it was mom and dad. When I was a kid, and, you know, just try and put yourself in my shoes. I thought everybody's houses had like 500 people waiting outside. You mean I there are 500 people waiting outside your father's house? But all those people also have 500 people waiting in their house? No, that's what I thought. I mean, you're looking at... I thought everybody's father, like all my friends in school, all their fathers beat up like 30, 30, 40, 40 people and put them in ambulance and, you know, they jumped off buildings. That was my normal. When you go home, the people that are socially coming home were all part of the film industry. Right. So that's your world. That world becomes yours, you know. The kids that I went to school with, today are all my colleagues, you know, from like Adi Uday, Ritik. Mm. All these, we literally used to carpool pool to school together. Mm. So, you know, your entire world is that. So, you don't know, you don't understand why are people treating these people with such reverence. These mm. are my parents' friends and these are my friends and it's fine. Only when you get a bit older and you start mm. understanding, do you realize, oh, okay, I get it now. So, it, you know, when, when, when your world is that, mm. it's very difficult to extricate yourself and then look into it and say, okay, yeah, let's be very normal about it. So that's what my life was. Sure. How, I mean, not that you have experience of being anything else, but how difficult is it or was it to be Amitabh Bachchan's son when you were not in that world? When you moved out of the world, perhaps when you went to do schooling or when you were in college or when you were among people who were not from the films? How difficult or easy is it to be that? Well, th the best way to answer that question is I don't know anything else. Exactly. Right? right. So it's easy. I mean, this is all I know. Right. From when I was born, you know, by the grace of God, um, I am Mr. and Mrs. Bachchan's son. But that's the only life I know. That's the only way I know how to behave and that's all I've ever had. So, so it's uh, normal. I know you chose acting and, and, and as a profession and I'm presuming, and I'm, I'm sure at some level, and of course you can correct me if I'm mistaken, is that that was your choice. That was something that you wanted to do. Let's say if you wanted to be a computer engineer, right? You would be in some Infosys and it was like that's Amitabh Bachchan's son. It would be pretty tough to live that life, right? I if you know. were, I mean, I yeah, really hypothetically know. speaking. Okay, I mean, I, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I, I've never, yeah. you know, people ask me these kind of questions, and I never have a good enough answer. It's, it's a huge bane to my existence. You know, when I keep saying that, why can't I come up with a good answer? That oh, what if you were doing something? How would it? I really don't know. But you were a fanboy yourself. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. Always and all. Always, but of his screen image at home, he was dad. Okay. And that credit has to go to my mother. You know, she never allowed us to. It was, he was dad. So, mm. you know, uh, that's what he was. But, yeah, as, as film watchers, mm. huge fans. Huge. I, mean, used to, I used to love going on his film set and just hanging out there all day with him. And 
and he used to love me coming and hanging with him. It was great. I mean, it's a wonderful childhood to have if you if if this is the profession you want to be in. Mm. I mean, can you imagine? I grew up on the film set of Prakash Mehra and Yash Chopra and and Manmohan Desai. I mean, you're, you're privileged. It's mm. it's a blessing, man. How many actors get to do that? Right. And it's, it's just, it was a wonderful upbringing. It was, it was, you lived in a dream world. I mean, I remember my father made a movie called Namak Halal. Mm. I'm not sure how many of you have seen it. And there was a song called Paga Ghunguru in that, right. which became very famous. I was there for the shooting of that. Oh, nice. And I remember sitting behind the camera and laughing at him, trying to chase his, you know, his modri down the right. water. I'm like, wow, that's funny, you know? Right. And why all these dancers dressed up like, you know, Africans and what's going on? But okay, it's funny. I like it. You know, and it, it's just a wonder world that you're living in. It was beautiful, man. It was just a great, great childhood. Um, what would have been outside that? I was sent to boarding school when I was nine years old, and over there, nobody cared who you were. Right. I was sent abroad, and over there, I mean, they don't know Indian cinema. So I had a very normal kind of life there as well, and it mm. was fine. It was absolutely fine. I mean, my dad used to come to my basketball matches or to my to my plays and sit in the audience like a normal parent and, and enjoy it or not enjoy it. Mm. And, you know, he, was, he used to participate in that sense. So I had, I had this beautiful balance of both the worlds. But today, if you ask me, oh, if you were working in Infosys, people would be saying that. I think they'll say it once, they'll say it twice, and then I it's fine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But as a personality, uh, you've said this before, Abhishek, that you're actually closer to your mom, and that Amitabh Bachchan is a loner. Is that true? Is he a loner? He's the most public person India's ever known. Yeah. No, he, I think he, he, he likes time by himself. Um, a lot of actors do. You know, I think uh, it kind of helps you just maybe acquaint yourself with somebody that you actually know the least, mm. which is yourself, mm. you know. So I think every actor likes that time where just let me be. But dad, by and large, is, is somebody who's, who's very shy. Um, and he, um, yeah, he keeps to himself a lot. He does. Yeah. I mean, so the side of him that we see is his public side. Yeah. Which is obviously someone who will chat up anyone who comes on his show, KBC, yeah. and you know, he's really, really good with, yeah. with people, but deep inside he's actually a shy person who would rather not. I don't know if he'd rather not, but I know then he'll finish KBC like he's doing right now, and mm. he'll come home at night and then give me a call and say I'm back, and we'll, he'll call me up to his TV area where he's watching uh, some, some sport of some sort and sit in silence. I mean, a lot of my childhood I used to be called just to, he likes his family around him, but okay. then he's just quiet. He just wants to, you know. Um, yeah, so he likes to keep to himself. I think he does a lot of a lot of thinking also, and as as a lot of actors do. Right. Um, I think we put on this illusion that we're very social, mm. and a part of us is because that demonstration is what gives you the confidence to go on a stage and do what you mm. have to do, and that that love of the energy that your audience gives back to you. Um, that's a part of us, but I think in order to do that and do true justice to that. You need to have the other end of it as well. You need to have that time by yourself where you can just think. Right. And to preserve that energy, right? Because yeah, you're constantly... Yeah. yeah, it's tough. Right, right. I mean, another person I've seen who does that, who I think is just brilliant as a public persona, is Shah Rukh. Mm. If you see Shah Rukh at home, he'll be sitting in a corner reading a book. He's, he's, he's immensely shy. You know, so I, I, I see that a lot. I see a lot of actors who, who need that time off. I mean, you could come back from work, you spend time with the family, but then you need that one, two hours where you're just by yourself and your thoughts and, you know, you just think about what you need to do, how you're doing it, or, you know, possibly just observe a certain thing. Or it's, it, you need that time by yourself. Right. And you're more like your mom? Yes. Um, my mom is, is, is more extroverted than my father. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I would say I'm more, in, even as an actor, I'd, I'd say I'm more like my mom. Yeah. Right. Questions from the audience? Uh, can you just uh, give the mic, please? Abhishek, I have been observing you over the period of the years. You, know, you have been doing some wonderful films, some good films. But one film was their guru. And you did tremendous job. Thank you. Tremendous job. Thank you. And I just don't know, you are cut out for, you have got a personality character. You are cut out for some, some lovely biopics. So have you ever thought about it? There, there could be some other subjects also where you should work up, upon it. Are you asking me that uh, uh, for another biopic? Another? Yeah. Um, 
You know, I think, no, I've not really thought specifically like that. But um, if a film like that came around, which I thought was inspirational, I'd, I'd love to do it. I've never been averse to any kind of film. But I've not specifically thought that, oh, here's a biopic and I must do a biopic. Uh, it, the, film, the film has to be exciting to do. Abhishek? Yeah. Yes, Jyoti. Yeah. Uh, I just have two questions to you. Just? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Number one is, uh, were you not Just so, the, the gentleman asking me a question is Mr. Jyoti Venkatesh. He's one of the most senior journalists we have. I was literally born in front of him. And he's been asking me two to five questions since I was born. So it's... <laughs> Yeah. Since you were born, no, since not was, no, no. Seriously, ask him. Really? He was that one of the guys when I was a production boy. Was 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 there as part of the press junk? He seen me as a kid. I'm not kidding. No, as in like he didn't go to the maternity ward. It's like boss. No, no. I, mean, I don't think he was at the maternity <laughs> ward. I'm pretty sure he was standing outside Breach Candy Hospital. Though. On the major sub sets. <laughs> there, major <laughs> sub. There, my first film. Yeah. Acha, Abhishek, where you? I just want to get it from the horse's mouth. Where you offered? Jyoti, you've just called me a horse. <laughs> Were you offered Paltan by J.P. Datta or did you say no to the offer when it came to you? Uh, yes, I was offered Paltan and I was doing Paltan and I very sadly had to leave Paltan. Um, and it, it's a decision which, which destroyed me. Uh, it really upset me having to take that decision. But there were certain circumstances which I could not get out of. And it destroyed me because J.P. Saab means the world to me. And... Um, not to be able to stand by him hmm. during this journey was something that that really upset me. Um, it, it was a, a tough, very difficult, one of the most difficult decisions I had to take in my professional career. And I feel very bad because I feel some way I kind of disappointed him and let him down. Um, but I've always wished him all the best. And um, the thing is, my relationship <laughs> with J.P. Saab goes beyond movies. He means far too much to me. My love and respect for him is, is, is far too big to let any film come in the way of that. But sadly, um, I could not be a part of that film. Um, so to answer your first question, I was doing Paltan. Uh, what was the second one? Second one is uh, several years back when I met Anil Kapoor on the sets of his film, I just casually asked him, Anil, your daughter has never been a hero. She was just a kid of eight, nine years. And he said, yeah, I'm a hero. Let me be a hero for a long time. Yeah. Why think of my daughter coming in films? So what is your take on Aradhana getting into films as an actress? Aradhya. Aradhya. She's six years old. <laughs> um, as far as Ishwari and I are concerned, be it tomorrow, 20 years down the line, or whenever, whatever she decides, we have decided as parents that we will support her no matter what. Because that's what our parents did for us as well. I still remember when I told my, my parents I wanted to be an actor, and they were very supportive. Um, I think as a parent, you want the best for your child. As a parent, you want your child to be happy and healthy. And that's the most important. What she decides to do is completely her choice. We will never ever weigh down onto her to say, this is what we expect you to do. Um, she will do whatever she wants to do, and we'll be proud of her regardless of what she becomes. Hello, Abhishek. Hi. Hi. Uh, now, first of all, congratulations on Manmarzia. It's a Thank beautiful you. film. Thank you very much. Um, now that we have watched the film, I want you to help us understand Robbie. Uh, so one of the things that stayed with me after the film was the fact that this guy is okay with being someone's backup, a second choice, or a fallback option. I want to understand how did he crack, crack that psyche? He's not okay being a backup. Um, Robbie's process is he's in love with her and his love for her outweighs any other love. And he's convinced that my love will prove its weightage to Rumi. So he's not happy being a backup. He's okay entering the scenario as an option that he says. But he's very convinced that I will win her over. Um, these are the slight nuances of, of Robbie that Anurag and I worked very hard on. That's what made him interesting to me. You know, it, it made him layered. He was multidimensional. He was aggressive in his own way. He was bullheaded in his own way. But above that, he was just so in love with this lady that he said, I will win her over. And, and he does. So that's what the approach was. 
Do you get that a lot, Abhishek? What? In terms of explaining that particular character, in terms of what he intended to do? Have you? Well, this is the first time I. This is the first time. First okay. time I got the opportunity to speak about okay. it. Okay, but you've been hearing that. Yes, okay. I've been hearing that, and um, I'm glad I'm hearing it because that means what we attempted to do mm. has kind of translated to the audiences that have seen the film. Right. Um, we were very conscious when we were making the film that it's very easy to label Robbie as the boring one because mm. he's the good guy. Mm. And sadly, good guys are labeled as boring. Shockingly, after the film release, which is now just about a week, mm. I've had more men come up to me and say thank you than women. And traditionally, right. you think that, you know, he's designed as the knight in shining armor. He's the good guy, you know. Uh, somewhere women will say, oh, I wish my boyfriend or husband could be like this. But it's actually men that have come and said, thank you, you know. You've given us confidence that... Because we they are like that. Yeah, right. we don't need to be this rebel bad guy and treat people badly and say no all the time. And So actually, uh, I was surprised by that. I mean, mm. I, I somewhere expected women to react to Robbie, but the way the men have right. has been um, an eye-opener for me. Have you had other characters uh, in, in the past where people have questioned, like, like for instance... Uh, if, if you might want to jog your memory, like in Kank, right? A lot of people did not understand what are the problem in that relationship. You seem to be a perfectly fine guy. She seemed to be a perfectly fine girl. You guys seem to be perfectly fine together. What was wrong with you that she had to... So this is one of the questions I, I asked Karan. Okay. And he said, that's why I'm making the film. I want to show... The perfect husband. Rishi is the mm. perfect husband. He's madly in love with Maya. He's a great guy. He's fun. He's successful. Um, he's independent, everything. She just doesn't love him. Mm. He says, you know, a lot of times in life, we are in a relationship where you realize that, okay, the formalcy is there, but I d she's just not in love with him. Mm. She's always been like a friend to him. And she didn't have any other choice. So she's like, okay, let's get married. But that was the thing. And I said, but why? Mm. He said, there's no why. It's right. just, it's, that's just the it's way complex, it is. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. just the way it is. Which is similar to, to, in, to, to, to Manmarzia, where there was a scene which actually got edited, where my mother asks me that, why do you love Rumi? What's, mm. I mean, what do you see in her? And he says, why do I need to see something in her? I just love her. It's an emotion. How can I quantify an emotion? Mm. Why do I need to justify an emotion? And why do I need to tell you why I love this girl? You know, which I thought was such a nice message to give, especially today's generation. Why does somebody else get to sit on judgment for what you feel? Nobody else should have that power over you to tell you that the person you love is right or wrong. And I like that. So, you know, it, in the terms of Kank, it was just, sadly, you know, she likes him. She mm. just doesn't love him. Right, right. Abhishek, hi. This is Priyanka. Towards your left. Hi. Hi, this is Priyanka from Indian Express. Abhishek, uh, just wanted to know your reaction to the controversy around Manmarzia, the three scenes that the Sikh community had a problem with, and makers went ahead and requested CBFC to delete those scenes. And apparently, uh, Anurag was also not informed about the decision. So as, a, as an actor who is part of the film, how do you react to that? I think each individual is allowed to react the way they have and they want to. It's their personal opinion. For me, it's not a big deal because, see, what is your film about? My film isn't about anybody smoking. I have no problem cutting that out. If somebody's taken objection to it and they are feeling that this, the intention of the film or the makers is not to upset anybody, not to upset any community. We're not here to ruffle any feathers. We just want to make a nice love story. That's what the film is about. If by cutting out one or two shots, it's going to placate somebody and make them feel better, I have no problems doing that. And I, I say this very sincerely. I, I really don't have an issue with it. Everybody's allowed to react the way they want. It's a free country. But for me, look, if me cutting out three shots, which is not impacting my narrative, makes you happy, by all means. Because my intention isn't to upset you. My intention isn't to start a controversy. And my intention is not to upset you. It's as simple as that. I'm very clear of these things. And, uh, and that's it. It's been removed and it's fine. Does it not set a wrong precedent at all? Because if any group is going to have any issue with any scene and that CBFC is past the film. It, it depends what the issue is, my mm. All right? Um, how do I give you a good example? Okay. My view is, is very different. I'm looking at its entirety. 
ask yourself two questions. Why and who is objecting? Hmm. What is the purpose behind that objection? If that is genuine, then you should look upon it genuinely. Because hmm. as somebody who's part of a film, as a filmmaker, you make movies for an audience. So if your audience, even if one member has an issue with something, you need to first ascertain, is that a genuine issue? If it is genuine, you need to address it. Hmm. I'm making a movie for them, not for myself. And if they have a problem, then I need to understand why. If I'm convinced with that, the next thing you need to ask yourself is, who's the loser here? Who stands to lose? In a situation like we are in right now, I'll tell you who stands to lose. The exhibitor stands to lose. I, as an actor, have done my job. I've been paid. The producer has sold his film to a studio. The studio has there on end sold the film to a distributor who has then sold it to an exhibitor. If there is, for example, an objection or a protest, there's going to be a cinema hall that's going to be vandalized. There are going to be shows of an exhibitor that are going to be cancelled. That person is going to lose money. You want to stand today and say, okay, how can you do this? You're, you know, this is a bad precedent. Please underwrite all the losses that the people down the chain are going to face. I'll stand by you. You have to. Th that's my industry as well. I've got to think about them. And like I said, what is the issue? You ha have an objection to one or two shots. Is that going to change your story? No. Take it out. It's fine. Yes, if it's something that's changing the narrative or the reason why I made that film, then I can sit and debate that and so try and You're saying you won't that. take the same position on Urta Punjab, for instance? No. I, I, I understand why they would want to say what they wanted to say in Urta mm. Punjab. This is just three very basic shots. It's not a big deal. Why is that worth more than what my exhibitor, which is part of my family, extended family, is going to have to face losses for? No, it's not. I'm not going to sit on that ego. I feel very strongly about these things. Mm. This is my industry as well. You sure. Know. I mean, we could, we so could like debate said, this The forever. first thing you have to ask is, what is the reason why they've taken objection? All right? They've objected to one or two small shots. If you remove that, it's not going to change your film. It's not. Also, you have to understand that this is an issue that has happened. If it happened before the release, is something I can understand. We can sit down and debate it and discuss it. This has happened after the release. Get on with it. Your film is not changing. If it's something that's going to change my film, then I have the right as a democratic citizen of this country to debate with you and to reason with you as to why you feel the way you do and I feel the way I do. And it's my job then to convince you. Something as small and trivial as this, I think it's absolutely fine. Sure. Next question. Say something about Yuva. Do you get that a lot? Because that might well be your finest performance. Um, I mean, Yuva was was was, well. was, 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 well, thank you. But Yuva was, was uh, I, I turned a corner in my career with mm. Yuva. Yuva was the first film where uh, I actually got positive reviews. Mm. Um, so for the first time, it was kind of, it was relieving for me because I just felt, <laughs> okay, I